All right. Uh, we are now almost ready to take off. There are a couple of other very quick things uh, to introduce uh, before we do so. Number one is, is every plane when you fly... You'll have a marker, in this case it's a B-17 marker. You'll put it in zone one on your zone track along the side of the battle board. Zone one is always your airfield. Uh, and so you'll start out in zone one. And then you'll take your primary target marker and you'll stick that marker in whichever zone your target is in. And I'll show you here in just a second how to figure that out. Our target, Lily France, is in zone four, so we'll go there. You can see this goes all the way to zone 15. Your targets will never be closer than zone 2, never further than zone 15, but it's out and back. So your missions will be anywhere from 4 to 30 zones long. Now, how do you figure out where your target is? Remember a few seconds ago when we looked at the target listings in Gazetteer book about figuring out what target you were going to fly to? The main part of this book is just a listing of all the different targets that are available. Now, for the 8th Air Force, which is where we're flying out of right here, the 8th Air Force, and then there's also an area for the 15th Air Force. For the 8th Air Force alone, there are over 300 possible different targets. Another reason why I picked one ahead of time. And here is our target right here, Lily, France. If you look up at the very top, of each page you'll see all the different zones that are available and whichever zone is the last zone for your target is the zone your target is in and you can see for Lily there's nothing else in zone 5 so our target is zone 4 we'll talk more about what these numbers and letters mean as we get going in the flight itself the other thing we need to talk about a little bit before we actually take off is paperwork. If I have one thing that I wish was a little bit different about this game, it's the paperwork. And there is a lot of paperwork. Uh, there's no getting around that. There are two pieces of paperwork that are pretty much required for every game, regardless of what type of game you're flying. And then there's additional paperwork if you're doing the group game or the full campaign and whatnot. The first piece of paperwork is the mission log sheet. Now each plane has their own, each plane type has their own mission log sheet. Along the top, there will be information about the flight you're about to take. Your campaign number, what mission number of the campaign, what mission number of your bomber. Your bomber doesn't always fly every mission. Your bomber name, I've named my name, uh, bomber, the board uh, BGG, the board game geek. The base location is England, our target is Lily, the target type is Industry, what box are we in? We're in the low box and we're plane number 15. Now, all of this is really more just flavor text. It's not required, uh, it's not required to have a good time, but if you like to write up after action reports like I do, you may have followed some of the, the uh, escapades of my campaign game in the Bucky Badger on Board Game Geek. This up here can help you with that information, as well as, especially your target, you don't forget where you're flying. The next area here is the notes area. You can use that for whatever you want. I generally use it to record the damage done to my plane along the way uh, by enemy fighters. Just go ahead and note in here, uh, uh, engine 3 out, uh, the, the left wing aileron is damaged, uh, uh, fire in the cockpit, whatever it might be. Uh, I always put that here. Down at the bottom of the area here, you've got a listing of all of your different crew members uh, for this particular plane and a space to put their name. Now I haven't done that here today. Uh, for my campaign, if you've been following along, you know that I've named my, my uh, crew members. It can very much increase your attachment to those crew members uh, and affect your enjoyment of the game if you do give them a crew member name. Uh, there are many excellent utilities and help files on Board Game Geek uh, to help you with that. 
There are even some, and especially if you go to the B-17 Queen of the Skies area, that have uh, automatically generate your entire crew names, uh, give them a hometown, their age, where they're from. Uh, they even base the names off of what names would have been most likely for a bomber crew in the 1940s. The other area here is the crew status area. There's a box for that. Again, you can use it kind of for what you want. I use it for two things. Number one, if my crew member takes an injury of some sort or a wound, I'm, I note it here, both the severity and type of wound. And then I also, if my crew member records a kill uh, of, an, of an enemy fighter, I note that in this area as well. But again, that's optional. You don't have to do any of that. Those crew injuries, which do affect play, can also be uh, uh, noted on the crew placement sheet. So you don't necessarily have to record that kind of stuff here. There is one last section of this sheet, and it is very important. And that's this area right here. This is the ammunition area. Every time one of your guns fires, you check off the box for that piece of ammunition. Now, it's not a round-for-round round box. It's a, I believe the manual calls it a, a unit of ammunition. And you only have so much for each gun. Your gun can only fire so many times before it runs out of ammunition. Uh, if you do find that you are close or are running out of ammunition, it is possible to move ammunition around. But this is all the ammunition you have for your flight for all your guns combined. And so as we go through the mission today... I'll be making notations in this area for ammunition and kills and wounds, and we'll maybe take another look at that a little bit later after we filled things in a little bit. The other piece of paperwork, and this is required, I don't think you can play this game without it, is the zone worksheet. The zone worksheet is separated into two areas, and there's three different sets on a page. The upper area is a bunch of stages that uh, prompt you for information that does have an effect on the game. And so you need to know what that information is. And things can get really hairy and you can forget. And it can be 10, 15, 20 minutes since the last time you wrote something down or checked for something. It's a really, really, really good idea to have this form and fill it out so that you can remember what that information is. Uh, the area up here are things like uh, what zone number you're in, what the weather is, are there any contrails, are you in formation with the rest of your bombers, how many waves of fighters are coming in, and so on. The bottom part of this area here says calculations and notes. Uh, again, you can use that for what you want. Uh, the, the manual recommends that you put die roll modifiers for combat situations, and that's okay to do. Uh, however, the tables, and we'll look at those tables quite a bit as we go through the book, do a very good job of also listing the die roll modifiers. What I use this for, I use this to record information about the fighters that attack. Where are they attacking from? Did I hit them? Uh, how much damage did I do? Did they hit me? How much damage did they do? And so I'll put that information here. And each one of these sections is for one zone. So on this page, we've, we can record information for three zones. You remember we talked earlier that zones uh, missions can go from 2 to 15, which really means 4 to 30. You could theoretically, 30 missions, end up using 10 of these worksheets. I've actually taken the liberty to print them on both sides of a sheet of paper just to save on paper. Uh, the, the forms themselves come as a cardstock, single sheet cardstock in the box. Uh, however, uh, you'll notice right on the, the form itself, it says players should copy sheet before play. I strongly recommend that. Uh, the good news is also is that the designers have put all of the forms that are used in the game together in one PDF file. And I know for a fact that they put that on both Board Game Geek and on ConSim World. And so we'll look more at this and I'll show you how things fill out as we go along. So those are the other pieces of paperwork. Uh, we've got our plane ready lined up in our airfield ready to go. We've got our target set. We are ready for takeoff.
Okay. The rest of this game, or almost the rest of this game, will take place in the game tables book. Now, a little word about tables and the book and other, uh, other tables and information. There's no way around it. This game has a ton of tables in it. Over a hundred pages worth of tables and information. Add in another, uh, I think, 40 pages or so of rules. Lots and lots and lots of books and tables and words and descriptions. And I love it. It's awesome. The level of detail all of these tables give you is amazing. When you hit a plane, you just don't hit a plane or so that it has a modifier. You hit the left wing so much that it shears the left wing off and then the pilot has to bail out. When... A fighter hits you, it just doesn't hit you and, and give you a modifier. It knocks out your left aileron, which gives you a modifier for when you're landing. Or it hits a, a spot in the cockpit and your co-pilot is lightly injured and he's got a wound or a cut on his thigh. All of those kinds of granularity are available in this game. And most of them are optional. You don't have to get that granular. If you just want to say, I suffered a light wound, okay. If you just want to say, I hit them a minor hit, and so they have a minus one die roll modifier, that works too. The level of detail is up to you. In this book are most of the charts. Now we're going to look at a couple of charts right at the very beginning, but the vast majority of the game is played on seven or eight different charts in this book. And they're on seven or eight continu uh, 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 contiguous pages, one right next to each other. And that basically is your sequence of play, are the charts in this book. There is no player aid cards. There are no sequence of play charts or things of that nature. Uh, and there's been a lot of controversy and discussion about this online. And the more I think about it, the more I like the way Target 4 today does it. And here's why. If you've got separate player aid charts or uh, sequences of play or whatnot, like for virtually all of the other war games that I've played, the ability exists to have the wrong card in hand when you make a roll or the wrong side of a card. You flipped it over or you looked on the wrong sequence of play or charts are out of order and you're not sure what one is next or where you were at before. Because this book is laid out so that you do things exactly in the order as the charts are in this book, there is no possibility of getting things in the wrong order. You just start on the start page, the weather chart, and you go through it until you're done with the combat and injury charts. Then you go back and start on the weather chart again. Turn the page, do another roll, do another uh, chart. It's just straight through, one after the other. There's no chance of having the wrong chart, no chance of rolling on the wrong side of a chart, no chance of getting messed up in your sequence. It really works really well. Having said that, let's go ahead and take off. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to test for the weather over the airfield, and that's what this chart right here is for. Weather is very important. Uh, in this game. It has a lot of effect on what happens. And there are two different weather charts. There's weather over your base, which you use for takeoff and landing in zone one, if you will. And then there is weather in zone that you use when you're in any of the other zones. So the first thing you need to do is roll for the weather in your uh, uh, airfield above your base. It's just a single 1d10. You go ahead and roll it. Two the weather for two is poor. Okay, that's not good. Uh, that can cause issues here in a moment when we take off. There are some die roll modifiers for the weather based on what time of year, what month you're flying in. We're just going to assume we're flying in a month that doesn't have that. I'm going to go ahead and record the weather as poor over zone one on my zone worksheet. The next step is takeoff, and that's the next chart in the book right here, takeoff. Again, it's a 1D10. We're going to go ahead and roll one die. And where the poor weather has an effect is if I get a 2. If I had good weather, a 2 would be fine. 
if I have poor weather, a two is, well, not fine. So let's go ahead and roll on that and see what we get. We get a three. Three through 10, takeoff is okay. Our squadron is in the air. We've taken off. Uh, we're zooming around the airbase and we're ready to go.